Yeah. Okay, so my name is Mark Holman. I'm from Implicit Explicit. And recently, I've been working with the guys from Container Solutions to come up with a new way to do continuous delivery. Now, um, if you Google continuous delivery or continuous integration at the moment, you're going to find loads of tools. I actually made a list from quick Google. Jenkins, Travis CI, Drone CI, Snap CI, Verica, Team City, Circle CI, Bamboo, Quick Build, and probably about 20 others. And they all do very similar things. You'll be familiar with what they do. Right? So static analysis, build things, deploy things, deploy something here and test it, deploy something there and test it, run some smoke tests, thousands of different things like this. They all have certain things in common, which is that they just run stuff in places. Right, that's basically what <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And CI and CD was invented like 20 years ago when running stuff in places was a really good idea. But these days, these days we've got all sorts of new requirements. And what's been happening is people just bolt extra stuff on. What we're suggesting is we need to reevaluate. So, um, they all have the same problem. They all put developer concerns above user concerns. They all put Developer concerns and bottom operations concerns. And none of them really have a language for important things. None of them have a language for performance. Right? They just say run something somewhere, right? Run stuff on a thing. They don't have a language for uptime, they don't have a language for zero downtime deployments, right? These are things that you have to add on to the system later. They don't care about how systems are composed, they're just going to run something somewhere, right? So take this and run it on test. That's it. It's the only way they look at things. So they don't care about anything that, that users do care about, right? It's a strange system. We build tools that are very developer centric and they're not based on what we're actually trying to deliver. So um, we sat down and uh, we thought, what, what, what can we do about this? So we've done a lot of thinking, we've made a pretty diagram, we did not make a logo. Um, and we've come up with this idea, Compose CD. So before I get into it, it's not going to be able to replace what you're, it's not even supposed to replace your CI, it probably won't be able to replace what you're doing now. And it's not for everybody. You're going to have to be running your workload in containers. Uh, your containers are going to have to be environment agnostic. So I'm mean, going to have to be able to put them anywhere, and they're going to have to be able to use some sort of service discovery tool to figure out at runtime what they're supposed to be doing. Um, you don't have to be able to continuously deploy your application, but that's sort of the whole goal. So it would be better if you had an application that could be continuously deployed. Um, so how does it work? Now, we're going to have to introduce some terminology. How much of time? Good. Good. <laughs> You're going way too fast, slow down. Okay. Um, introduce some terminology. Most important thing is the wall. Yeah. So, um, we, we don't care. The only thing we care about is deploy time stuff, right? So, we care about you getting your software into the image repository, right? Everything after that, that's our thing. I think before that, we don't care. We're not trying to fix it. So, as we say here, we don't build a test your code, we compose containers fractally, and we're going to look at what that means later. So, slide's are really small. Oh yeah, right. So, the idea of Compose CD is that composition and non-functional requirements are first-class citizens, not things that you bolt on afterwards. Um, the approach is pull-based. So, Whereas with uh, Jenkins, for example, the, the, the way that all CI tools look is I'm a developer, I commit some code, push it to GitHub, and then it gets pushed, 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 pushed. What we're saying is we don't care about a lot of stuff. From the image repository onwards, we're going to pull it towards where you want it, which is the users. I'm going to see what that means. Um, what it effectively means is that DTAP is dead. Right? So DTAP is just an arbitrary construction of VMs or environments moving towards your end goal. What we're saying is it, it just doesn't matter. That's not actually what you care about. DTAP, DTAP is an artificial construction. What you want to do is to check the subcomponents of your uh, sub compositions of your services are working together. And then when it's done, they make large compositions. And then finally, your ultimate uh, composition, which just happens to be production. So, how does it look? This in the middle. <laughs> this is the wall, right? 
So anything on that side, we don't care about. If you want to do building, unit testing, static code analysis, all the rest of that shit, then go to any one of those uh, tools that I mentioned earlier. Can you give me a one minute more? Yeah. Um, I'm giving you a two minute more. On this side is where Compose CD gets involved. So the idea is, is that we give you a language to be able to describe things you care about, which is on this side I have Composition X at the top, which consists of three services, A, B, and C. A, B, and C have non-functional requirements that we want to test. When there's a new version of one of those repositories, we want to automatically pull it into the composition and run non-functional testing against it. Can we upgrade, can we upgrade it without any downtime? Can we put load on it? and check that it performs as we expected it to. As these things are coming off the queue at the top, which you can't really read, and getting pulled in, when that composition is tested and stable and done, and it's running the whole time, it's then pulled into, as a full composition, you see X becomes part of the larger composition, which will then be production at the end, into the final production composition. So the idea is, is that it's a fractal way of putting together services in a more intuitive sense. We're not really inventing anything here, it's just a different way of looking at the same problem which is user-centric instead of developer-centric. Yeah. One minute. Um, that's a shame because I'm done. Uh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> I now have four minutes. <laughs> you make your own rules. Uh, Is it on good up? Right, so... <laughs> It's on GitHub. So I tried to sort of, you know, manage expectations at the beginning. Uh, it's an idea. You <laughs> want, but if we put it on GitHub and you'd like to contribute, Frank, then you're more than welcome to do so. As is anyone else here. It's a PowerPoint. It's, it's not PowerPoint. It's a Google slide thing, which is very better. It's a particularly pretty one if I do say so myself. <laughs> Yes, in the back. Is it clear, I mean, is it my perception that the last composition will be tested as well before going into production? Because it's not the last step in, like, that's not production there. That is production. Wouldn't X differ because <coughs> one of the internal components of X changed, and thus X might have changed, and thus the composition of which X is part of changed? Because that would, it, 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 it'll only work if it's fully backwards compatible with the other services in the eventual composition. Of course, of course. So we're assuming we're running with containers, that they're sort of golden images that get their deploy time information from service discovery. We're also probably assuming that a lot of this is stateless or you've dealt with your data problems. Um, so, and if you're running different microservices, then you've already dealt with the fact that you're going to have version lag and you're going to have to have a way of dealing with that. Um, that's basically not our problem. We're giving them uh, is, is a language. <laughs> well, that's not. I'm just, it's just not. Yeah. <laughs> we're giving a, we're giving a language that we to describe the things that users really care about, right? which is how things are composed and how they perform on the deploy side of the wall. Instead of putting tooling here and trying to get it to do the whole lot, that's not helpful. Does that answer the question? Because you still using the compositions has to be the same taste as the definition of what the compositions has to do. Exactly. Yeah. So you're going to have to, we can't write tests for you. But what we can do is give you a way to look at the problem which is conducive to that sort of composition of testing, right? Focusing on non functional stuff, security, like uh, the performance on the load. Making these first class citizens is another way of saying, like, worry about that first. Like, uh, production first development is something that's being spoken about and it's coming for the monitoring first and then work backwards. This is just an extension of that idea with tooling up in it. Yes? What should be the trigger of the tool when you say it should not be pushed like every every version? Is there like any GitHub tag or any condition to trigger the tool? Well, there won't be a GitHub tag because that's on the left side of the wall with wild things. We don't care about that shit. On the other side of the wall, Westeros. So, <laughs> we all we have is queues of tested shit. So, like at the top there, the queue just on the right side of the walls is all the new images and the way that come into composition X. Now, when that's tested, and you have to define yourself when that's tested, the whole composition moves to the final composition. Now, data is a big problem, but data is a big problem anyway. We're not trying to solve that. Fair enough. State is always an issue.
still starts to like push to me. Yeah, right? exactly. Where's the pool? You know, there's an arrow pointing to the right. Where's the arrow going to the left? Yes, yeah, so look, I will fire the graphic designer, but basically it's <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 the idea is to answer the question, the idea is not that um, there's some process on this side pushing things in. The idea is that there is a daemon running, managing a composition, right. which is monitoring for new versions, and when it's ready for one, it'll pull it in. Still sounds like a push to me. Can you fire yourself? Can you fire yourself? Can I fire myself? I've never tried it. I've probably had fun with it. So what is, what is the promise that the composition is making? What is the progress that the composition Promise, as in promise theory. Oh, wow. attention, right? uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the promise is that it will um, uh, attempt to, it will promise to pull new versions and run your tests against them. That's it. Yeah, now, it's not, it doesn't really go very far in terms of promise theory. Yeah, I think we need another beer. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, Mark, why are you not really managing functional testing? Uh, why is this? sort of outside your scope while sort of performance testing is inside your scope. Is there sort of inherent difference? Yeah. So because With performance, performance, test performance testing is hard and it's always left to last. And it's never done right. Uh -huh. We're saying let's do it first because functional testing is comparatively easy, right? You don't need actual state and come up with also. So by comparison an end-to-end -end test, which just says I have a I have a given state and like time is not really a factor, I'm just going to run stuff and it will deterministically run through logic. It's easier than the non-functional stuff where we want to monitor what's happening and that's the nice little things you see here, monitoring. Right? So, time's up. Okay. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll finish it.